And how do you have people coming into your meeting and you never get their name and address just to stay in touch with them? That's just marketing 101. That's for people that are, are intelligent enough to read Dale Carnegie's book on how to win friends and influence people. So we were talking. So we want prosperity without doing the work. And one of the dangers that we have to watch out with our children, hear me first generation of wealth builders, with our children, is that they come into the promised land with the feeling of entitlement. Let's look at Carolyn Kennedy for a moment. Carolyn Kennedy could have taken the Senate seat in New York. Now, I know I'm talking politics right now. That seat, could that have possibly have been her seat? But well, what happened, Prophet Kelly? She declined it. She declined it. You want to know why she declined it? Because she felt like she was entitled to it, but she didn't want to go through the persecution to get it. And sometimes when you walk into wealth or power that has already been worked out, you don't want to do the work to keep it. And that's how you end up having generations that can come behind you and lose your entire inheritance because they never knew the work you had to do to get it. So they don't have the mindset to know how to keep it. Uh, they will destroy the brand. You had... You, and, and, and that's one of the situations that we have to begin to look at when it comes to black wealth in America. Is that our second generation is destroying first generation wealth because we gave them a life that they never worked for and they never did the work to learn how to keep the life that they had coming to them. And see, when we don't understand and see, we don't take notes. This is why the role of the fledgling is important. That they become blindfolded in, in, in the meetings and that they're learning because we don't want them to, to be distracted in the order by seeing. We want their ears to be open to hearing. Because if they walk into entitlement, the next saddest individual is a person that comes into inherited wealth. Because all they know is that they got the wealth, but they don't know how to get it, nor do they know how to keep it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a book called The Sin of Entitlement. Of people that walks into stuff because they believe they deserve it, but they don't do the work to know how to maintain it and keep it. This is why Jesus, even though he wanted to feed the multitude, he didn't feed them until there was order put in place. Now, sometimes what you'll find with the rich is that the rich will take sometime their children and throw them into a third world country and say survive, because they know they have to create a boot camp. If you don't create a boot camp for your next generation, they're going to boot all the wealth in your camp out. And they're going to give you the boot. You know how many black businessmen that I've talked to 
that fathers had built successful businesses here in New York, and they turned it over to their children, and the business got destroyed. I'm looking at a situation right now, and I talked to the father, the father said to me, he says, I, I, I made some big mistakes. He said, I said, what was the mistake so I don't make them at mine? He says, I try to protect my children from struggle. I says, what happened? He says, when they got into the fight, they didn't know how to fight. Because they never knew what it was to struggle. If you take a chick that is struggling to be born, and you crack the egg for the chick. What happens, Prophet Deborah? The chick will not survive. It will die. Right. It can't survive the outer world because it never pecked its way out of its own inner world. And sometimes when we are looking at certain things, that it is easy to escape a situation than to live and manage yourself in a situation. Like I was in a school when I was growing up. I was bussed out at the second grade. I remember the first time I was called nigger. I came home and asked my mother what was a nigger. She told me it was someone that was ignorant and I moved on. And she told me pretty much niggers come in all colors. And that's the way we left it. I stayed in that school until the sixth grade. When I went to my junior high school, I used to get chased home in school in Bensonhurst. And we as black students, we learned how to walk and wait for each other in groups so we would not walk by ourselves so we don't get picked off. We remember dodging BB guns and all type of stuff like this and being hit with hockey sticks. But none of us had the sense to ask to be transferred out into something easier. We've learned to manage ourselves there until I became the first black president of that school in Bensonhurst with the smallest number where we were the minority in the school. And I went and mobilized the freshmen and got my name up on the plaque. I never knew how to run from a fight. I always learned how to manage myself in one. Second generation wealth runs from fights because they don't know how to manage themselves in conflicts. And what it does, it only shows up later when they have to stand to become leaders that they don't know how to stand. I'd rather get a person that has fell down and gotten up than a person that has always stood standing because they may not know the art of how to get up. And so what happens when you begin to look at a true liberator they struggle among the people that they call to deliver. Y'all won't work with me. Some of your top record execs that are in the entertainment industry can't walk in bed -Stuy without a bodyguard. This is how you can tell true leaders. And some of you need to get the, um, um, this magazine. I usually don't do stuff like this. But I went to be on Reverend Sharpton's show and he made the cover of Ebony. Wake up early.